Yeah, well, I got to Tiffany. I got to tell you, if I was a thirteen-year-old boy back then when I watched <laughs> when I watched you and loved watching your video clips, and someone told me that one day I could be on Tiffany's bus tour bus, my head it's would have. A exploded. lot of fun. I have to say, it's a good place to be. <laughs> Tiffany. Hi, how are you? Yeah, this, good. Is, this is wild. Yeah, like, it this is, is, um, it is wild. Yeah, um, can you I believe that? A cup of coffee, so it's very wild. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love it. Well, yes, uh, not like the good old days. Um, now, can you believe that? I, I would think that your song, I think We're Alone Now, is probably one of the most played songs on radio throughout the world during Thank these times. Uh, that would be a real honor. I mean, I would love that. I know it's getting played a lot now during, you know, all the quarantine and all the stuff because people are alone out there. So sending love to everybody who might be out there feeling a little bit down. Hope that, you know, music and everything and all the shout out give you a little bit of hope and love. Uh, we're in this together, guys. So, but yeah, I know that the song just continues to have its own life from commercials to dance moves to videos to people re, you know redoing the song um so yeah it's it's been a quite a journey with i think we're alone now i love it <laughs> nonetheless it's, it's always fun will we see you on tiktok bringing back some of your old 1987 moves uh well you saw me on my own facebook and my tiffanytunes.com and i was busting out with the salt and pepper dancers on the mixtape tour uh and they were like we still know, need to know that move I was like, all right, you guys, old school, we'll do it, you know? So it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had a dancer background. A lot of people don't know. I've had like these lives upon lives upon lives of being an LA born and raised kid. Um, my parents know nothing about the show business. Business. Um, I lived outside of LA, kind of towards more East LA. Um, so, you know, my parents were like, well, my daughter just won't stop singing. Um, you know, my stepdad was, was, a go-getter and he was like well is this what you really want to do i don't know anything about it but i'll ask around so he got me to play with country and western bands here and there that's yeah. how i got my start but i was singing professionally and taking on gigs and my own posters and things by the time i was nine so i've been doing this a long time <laughs> <laughs> so when what can you remember the moment when you did i mean fill your first shopping mall well, my first, I mean, my first, you know, before that, like I said, as I've had TV experiences, I did dancing and I did some modeling and acting because, you know, before I had my record deal, I got into the LA thing of, uh, well, she's got to do everything. You know, so I went to acting class and everything. And I got to know a lot of people like Martika and uh, Stacy Ferguson and all these people on the down low before they were famous. We were all hustling, going on auditions together. So Ricky Martin and all these people, it's so funny. Um, you know, cause it's like, well, that's my childhood. Hold on, we were just dorks going on auditions and saying, hey, did you get it or not? You know, so um, it was a pack of kids, but I mean, we weren't like, we didn't live in the same area. So we weren't like those kids that hung out. We was just only at auditions. And I felt like I was a part of something. And then music was what I was really good at. And that took me into getting a record deal at 14. And I think we're alone now coming down the pipeline. And, and it's been a wild ride ever since. I mean, I, I'm forever grateful. Who would have thought that like, I'd be dancing in my room going, I want to be a singer and it really happening, you know? So I'm, I'm forever grateful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I was a big fan, you know, young lad in Australia, you know, and um, you yeah, know, and we'd watch that and that video clip was nuts. I think we're alone now. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. We didn't know. I mean, I think it was part of like, you know, my, my manager at the time didn't know really what to do with a young kid, you know? I mean, like we had, tried clubs in new york that's how the first uh single came out which was actually danny nobody wins not i think we're alone now off the first album and it was you know do not doing well at radio and then i was going into clubs and i was too young to really hang out and meet anybody so it was like they were into my music and then i was gone <laughs> and it was like well this is just clearly not working and had it not been for the mall tour I don't think I really would have had a career, you know, who knows? I'm determined. I was bitten by the bug. I think it was meant to be, but that was, that's, 
you know, that's my start and that's my story. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful story. Um, now, what do you think? Uh, a few weeks ago, you saw Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day perf- cover the song. Um, yeah. How did that, how did you go when that popped up the next morning? Oh, I, thought it's, I thought it's great. I mean, you know, I love to hear it a little bit more aggressive. You know, um, I think we're alone now. The song is so great, written, you know, by Richie Gordell, and, you know, Tommy James and the Shondells. So it just really is. I mean, I've done it ska and I've done it like full on punk and I've done it like hard rock and I've done it acoustic and I've done it on piano and I've done it like all kinds of different ways. But it's, a, you know, a well-written song can take on many different forms. So I thought, I think his version is awesome. Uh, it's very, very cool. I love it. And, you know, I mean, it's like, I've been doing the the more rock version of I Think We're Alone Now. We just released it last year, a 2019 version. Um, and we did the video and everything like that. But I have been doing that in my shows for a little while, trying to blend the old music with the new, you know, always that challenge. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, my new music is what it is and we're going that way and I'm finally right. found my people and we're doing this. But with that said, it's like, I don't want it to be, okay, and now I'm going to do retro and then I'm going to do my new stuff. It's like so disjointed. Well, I have a body of great songs that I was given when, you know, I was just a young girl. I didn't even know. I wasn't even a songwriter then, but could have been all this time. You know, I saw him standing there. Yeah. Uh, I think we're alone. All of them can be really rocked out and done in a modern way now that they're just so well-written songs right. um, that they just transform and become even bigger winners in today's mm-hmm. forum. So we're having fun really tweaking some of those songs, you know? And, so, and so, like, you are, you, so you are- So you are- A little bit, yeah, no, especially so online. You, that, so, so, so now you are a rock chick. Right. Well, I've always been a rock chick inside. I've always been the rebel inside here. <laughs> I mean, even in the pop world, I mean, you know, there was your Debbie Gibson and your Tiffany, and I was always the edgy one. You know, I, I come from LA. Um, I, you know, I'm from East LA, primarily that neighborhood. Um, so, you know, I'm more like, you know, hood savvy, survival savvy. And my dad, my stepfather was from military. So he was a very go make it happen kind of person. So you kind of had to cut your own, you know, a little bit. So that was like a lot of difference between me and Deb, um, where she was, you know, I mean, obviously that's great. I mean, my family loved me in a different way, but her family, she started showing the talent very early and she could play and that was mm-hmm. phenomenal. You know, and so they nurtured that right away. And then she, they started to groom that talent. Whereas, you know, with my family, it was different. I had like a, a strained relation, relationship with my stepfather. The one thing that brought us together was music. Right. So it's, yeah. you know, a bittersweet story, but it's a great story nonetheless, because through all of those things made me. Um, yeah. And it made me a better person. It made me a better songwriter, uh, healthier relationships in the long run. I mean, through all the crazy and, you know, no communication with my parents and all the different things that I went through as a normal teens, really. Right. Um, but except I was a celebrity and selling millions of records. So it was a little bit more pressure. But, you know, with that said, um, you know, thank God everything worked out in the long run, you know. Yeah. So I'm and very so- happy not to like represent a very good family. <laughs> Yeah, healthy and everything but who would have thought that the music industry really would have kind of made it all worse for a second and then better you right. know because well, um, so how's your i mean have you spoken to debbie gibson lately like, i talk to deb all the time yeah we're friends so um you know i mean deb is home right now she's self-quarantining of yeah. course you know we're both off the road right this minute uh, i don't know what her further plans are but uh, I know for me, I'm not on tour right now. I'm like, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> right. Is it, but it, her and your, your relationship, it, it's fascinating. It was a great moment in pop history, wasn't it? You know, that, that period there in 87, 88. Great 89. Moment. What do you mean? <laughs> that was, it was um, great. Yeah, that rivalry but, that the media created, I guess. But, you know, we've, we've kind of continued to have fun with that, very tongue-in-cheek, you know, be a little cheeky with it. Um, that we've, you know, done the sci-fi movies where we were against each other and, the, you know, and, and the roles and, uh, and we had the fight and everything like that. And people love that. And we loved it, too. So, I mean, she's, you know, she's like my sister. You know, we have our different 
differences. We don't always understand where each other is coming from, but we'll defend each other and we love each other and we respect each other, but we are totally two different beasts. I mean, you, you, you know, people come to the show and they're just like, Oh, Debbie. And then all oh, Debbie. And it's like, it's like, two, it's like, it's like wicked. But <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Here's a hard hitting question for you. Are you a redhead? I am. Yes. So, uh, am I not representing that? Okay. No, okay. no. Like it was a debate. What? Like when, when you when I was watching those video yeah. clips, I'm like, I'm is that a, is a, Tiffany a redhead? Is not representing true. No, no, it's all. It's very <laughs> Auburn. It's great. All right, this is good. We we I'm following yeah, up. Yeah, I've been a redhead forever. I hated it for a long time in school. Right. I wanted to have any other color but red. You know, that whole thing. I'd rather be dead than red on the head and all that well, kind of I hope thing. Well, I hope you went back to those girls that bullied you for being a redhead when you came out and said, come on, I am Tiffany now. I am selling at shopping malls around the you world. You know, I never really, I mean, I just, I've never really been somebody that goes, you know, d does that kind of stuff. I don't hold grudges like that. Good. You know? Yes, people just change. Definitely. I saw girls inviting me places that I was like, you never talked to me before. Don't even try it. You know, but uh, that's being hood savvy. See? <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And also of uh, cooking, you, you, uh, you're running a cooking. Yes. I just what started Let's Food with Tiffany, which has been a, a cooking has been a passion of mine. I mean, I've been cooking behind the scenes for a long time. It's something I do after shows. It just like it calms me down. And the band and I, we go back to Airbnb and usually, you know, got all this extra energy and with the wine starts flowing. And, and so I, I start making something like real sauce or, you know, bolognese or something. And people are like, you can't make all of that. I'm like, I can make it on the fast track and I can use a lot of great spices and a lot of great flavors, real foods that pack a punch that really, yes, it'd be better if you had two hours or three hours or five hours. To make right. a song. But <laughs> so I it's have cool. it's, it's 40 cool. minutes, you know, but it's nonetheless, it's really great. So I'm like, I've learned cooking on the fly. And that's kind of what Let's Food is, Let's Food with Tiffany is about, you know, easy right. remedy, you know, recipes, easy things to go to that are in your fridge, five or six different components. But we make some good food. I love Thai. Uh -huh. I'm Mediterranean. I love, you know, Arabic food, of course, Mexican food, Italian yeah. food, you name it. <laughs> so we can find Let's Food with Tiffany. That's let's what we're going to do. Let's Food with Tiffany. If you go to Tiffany right. Tunes, which I highly yeah. encourage everybody, because that's all things Tiff World. Um, yeah. And that's going to take you to the new music. You can hear it. Yeah. Um, what I've been doing, all my backstory, uh, pictures, all the cool things that are going on in hopefully live touring still. We're hoping for the end of the year. So keep updated with that. And Let's Food with Tiffany, because again, that's a way to come into my home and right. be um, separate with just me. You know, usually it's not the band. I do have guests and things that'll be popping on here and there. But no, it's me and my madness that you get to All experience. Right. <laughs> and so really there you go. Food. There you go, America. <laughs> yeah, that, that beautiful young girl, you know, <laughs> Tiffany, that we loved in the late 80s is an adorable lady a few years on who now well, can the yeah. mean past dish and still be a rock star. Well, thank you. No, I'm having fun living my life, doing stuff around great people and enjoying it and, and just, you know, growing as a musician and as a person. And yeah, man, you know, this has been kind of weird. We're all stuck here, but we're going to get through this. And, and I think this, you know, this has kind of just been a readjustment. So for me, I'm working through it and I've found new things about myself. So I think maybe that was coming, maybe hopefully some of the message here. Yeah, well, um, I reckon you're a top, I reckon you're a top chick. Well, thank you, babe. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a pleasure. Um, I, I, I will be to sing. I will. I'll attempt to sing you out here. Um, okay, let's I, do it. I, I think you. I think we're alone now. It doesn't seem to be anyone around. I think we're alone now. <laughs> Did I go all right then? Beating of our hearts is the only sound. Oh, you little beauty. All right, and I, what was the song? What was the move I was meant to do? Oh, uh, yeah, this um, one. Oh, oh, that's the one. Yeah, when you're, yeah. When you're doing the little jumping jacks kind of. Yeah. You know, wow. that kind of thing. Get, get into it. Baby, <laughs> what a woman. All right, I, I could have been, I could have been so beautiful.
Could have been. I know. What yeah. have you been doing with all this time? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Tiffany, love you. Great work. Um, I will. All, all of us. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.